today I'll be presenting the results of a systematic uh, review and meta-analysis that examines the efficacy of the flip classroom for introductory statistics courses at the undergraduate level. So throughout the presentation, I might refer to the flip class as the FC and the business as usual lecture class um, as the LC. So in post-secondary education, the flipped classroom has seen a lot of attention and research focus. Um, as uh, Dr. Rutherford described, uh, it's a blended learning model that sort of switches the paradigm where traditional homework and lectures take place. Um, so the basic formula is watching the recorded lectures and readings at home and doing the active learning components in class. You know, uh, for example, problem solving, uh, group work, quizzes, uh, and so on. So the lecture is still the building block of the flipped classroom but it's assigned as self-paced homework and this makes it more digestible for students cognitively and during class the instructor is available to provide individualized instruction and scaffold student learning along with um, peer mentors and teaching assistants so the success of the flipped classroom though it relies on the notion that students are sufficiently self-reliant and will actually watch the lectures and come to class prepared um, but not all students fit this mold and may benefit from a more fixed uh, weekly lecture structure. So challenges of flipping an intro stats class include, um, of course, considerable front end work for the instructor creating pre recorded lectures and planning the in class activities. And also many instructors of intro stats courses already incorporate some active learning components into their lecture or they already include some lab time and so the idea of the flip class may not seem uh, particularly groundbreaking um, initially. Uh, however, the intro stats class for social science and other non math majors may be a suitable candidate for the flip classroom pedagogy. As most of us are, you know, well, well aware this this class, the students in this class traditionally suffer from um, challenges um, unique to this class um, and and it's required for many majors and so um, as this, the talks this morning very nicely kind of unpacked. And there's lots of variation in student ability, uh, anxiety levels, motivation, etc. And this makes lecturing at the right pace a challenge for instructors. And intro stats is usually not the most popular course. It's, it's not often seen as, as valuable. And students tend to have a fixed mindset that they are poor in statistics and math. So flipping the intro stats class may be a good way to alleviate these lecture related challenges since it allows students to self pace and the in class activities may help build statistical literacy. So a small handful of studies have found an advantage of the flip class compared to the traditional class for intro stats on both perceptions and attitudes as well as learning outcomes. Uh, however, these studies are all quasi experimental in that important features of the class are kept consistent across both sections, such as the day and time of the class, the semester, the instructor, um, but students still self select into their class of preference. So it's difficult to draw any causal conclusions about the flipped class format. And also many studies have small classroom sizes, so they might be underpowered. So we conducted this meta analysis to explore two overarching research questions. First, do non math majors enrolled in an intro stats class? So these are students that tend to struggle the most in this course. Do they perform better on final exams or overall course grades when uh, enrolled in the flip class compared to the lecture class? And second, is any advantage of the flip class moderated or attenuated by uh, class sizes, uh, weekly quizzes, or the field of study that the class was designed for? So we searched several academic databases using just two search terms, uh, flip class, and statistics to cast uh, a wide net. We searched up to March of 2020, and we looked at the reference lists for other potential candidates. So our initial uh, inclusion criteria was a target population of non-mathematics and non-statistics undergraduate majors of any age, and the class had to be introductory stats, so not any other stats or research methods course. Um, and the article had to compare the flip class to the lecture class, um, as well, the outcome must have been a numerical final course grade or final exam grade, either as a percentage or uh, that we could convert to a percentage. 
So here is the full uh, flow chart for the systematic review, but um, it's probably difficult for, for the audience to see many of the details. So I'll just briefly summarize. Our initial search found around 125 articles, but after all the exclusions, we were left with 10 eligible articles. And one article ran separate analyses over two different semesters. So we ended up treating uh, this one study as two separate studies. And so this resulted in 11 studies with um, 7,200 participants for our meta-analysis. And this table describes, describes each of the studies, but again, uh, probably hard, hard to read. So um, to, to summarize, all the studies used this a quasi-experimental design where students ultimately chose uh, between the flipped and lecture sections. The total sample sizes in the flipped class as well as the lecture class range between about 20 and 1500. However, a couple of studies combined different sections of the flipped class or the lecture class for analysis. So the actual class sizes for either section did not exceed about 483 students. And with respect to outcomes, uh, eight of the studies used the final exam score two used the final grade, and one used a post-test score not included in the student's grade for the course. Uh, and the median percentage in the flip class was 71.5% for the, for the final outcome and 64% in the lecture class. So the mean differences between uh, flipped and lecture class range between negative 2.33% to 16.9%. So the negative 2.33 was for uh, just one study in which the lecture section had slightly higher final exam scores than the flipped section, and I'll, um, I'll revisit that later. Um, and the Hedges G standardized mean differences range between negative 0.16 to 1.14, so the effects um, ranged from small to large. So here's a forest plot showing our study effects. The vertical dashed line demarcates no difference between the flipped and lecture classes on the final outcome. And the effects to the right of the vertical line are showing that for nine of the studies, the flip class had significantly higher outcomes than the lecture class. And we fit a random effects model since we could not assume that all the studies were estimating a single treatment effect. And the pooled meta-analytic effect was a simple weighted uh, unstandardized difference in means in either the final exam or final grade percentage. This pool difference for the 11 studies was 6.9%. So the flipped sections had on average about a 7% higher final exam or grade compared to the lecture sections. And the 95% confidence interval around the pooled estimate was 3.7 and 10.1, which is um, obviously significant and, and fairly precise due to the large uh, pooled sample size. However, the estimated heterogeneity was substantial with an I squared of 89%. And this suggests large variation in, in the magnitude of effects beyond um, what would be expected from sampling error alone. So we ran a meta regression to explore sources of these differences in effects across studies. So our three moderators were the classroom size of the flipped class, uh, field of study and weekly quizzes. So class size was split into classes larger than 100 versus classes smaller than 100. And field of study was split into studies with classes designed for non-social science majors such as business or engineering versus studies with classes designed for strictly social science majors such as psychology. Um, neither class size nor field were significant moderators of the overall effect of the flip class, um, either when entered alone or simultaneously um, in, in the meta regression. Our third moderator, weekly class quizzes, however, um, it did significantly moderate the flipped class effect. And even after adjusting for class size and fields, the coefficient for quizzes was 7%. So um, to kind of break down what this overall effect of class quizzes, this, the 7% actually means, um, for this sub analysis, we focused on the 10 studies that indicated that students were given a weekly quiz in the flipped section of the study. And among these 10 studies, six of them had a weekly quiz in the flipped section, but not in the regular lecture section. So that's kind of the top half of the slide. And so among these six studies, the flipped classes with a weekly quiz had a final exam scores that was uh, set 9.6% higher than the lecture class that did not have a weekly quiz. And, and this difference was significant. But then if we look at the four studies in which the flip class and the lecture class both gave students weekly quizzes, um, the flipped classes had final exam scores that were only 2.6% uh, higher than final exam scores in the lecture classes. 
And you may also notice that the two confidence intervals um, do not overlap. So the true effects across these comparisons are likely divergent. So the overall effect of quizzes is the difference between these two uh, differences and suggests that the advantage of the flip class in our pooled estimate is attenuated by accounting for weekly class quizzes. Um, as well, the heterogene heterogeneity was reduced to 72% um, when we accounted for um, weekly class quizzes. We also looked at publication bias, although um, these results should be taken with a grain of salt given our small kind of pool of studies. Uh, the idea of the funnel plots is that they show whether there are any studies potentially missing that would have concluded unfavorable effects um, if they were published. So in this case, they would have concluded that um, the flip class is not, doesn't have an advantage over the traditional class. So in the absence of publication bias, a funnel plot should be symmetrical as studies with high precision should cluster close to the pooled estimate, which is the vertical line in the center, while studies with low precision should disperse widely and evenly on both sides of the pooled estimate. And the funnel plot of our studies appears slightly you know, asymmetrical with the lower left area of the funnel plot appearing to miss, miss some studies. Um, and an area, it, it's, it's corresponding to smaller studies that would have favored the lecture classroom, um, suggesting that potentially studies are, are missing due to publication bias or, or file drawer, et cetera. Um, a trim and fill analysis on the right shows that um, these three studies, when, when the estimate is adjusted for these three missing studies, it's reduced to 4.9% um, compared to the original estimate of 6.9%. And then we ran a sensitivity analysis, um, in, included, including a leave one out for each study to see what would happen to the pooled estimate if we removed each study. Um, and so this found that one, one of the studies that had a, a 16 percentage difference between the flipped and lecture classes um, had excessive influence over the pooled estimate and removing this study um, reduced the pooled estimate to 5.6% um, and also reduced the heterogeneity uh, to 83%. And another concern um, that was raised was that not all our studies used final exam as the primary outcome. So um, we removed the three studies that had either a final grade as the outcome or the post-test evaluation as the outcome. And we refit the random effects model to the eight studies that used final exam scores as outcome. And this did reduce the pooled estimate slightly to 6.1%, but not meaningfully. And heterogeneity still remained quite high at 88%. And so this suggests that our, our having different performance outcomes uh, among our studies did not meaningfully impact the variability and effects across studies. And this kind of supported our choice to combine the 11 studies in our primary analysis. So the strengths of this research include having final exams as our primary outcome, which has been shown to be a good comparative tool between classes that implement different teaching methods, especially when assessments and instructors are kept consistent across sections, as was the case for most of our studies. Um, our Hedges G standardized mean difference between class formats was uh, 0.40, which falls on the higher end of the range of effect sizes obtained in other meta-analyses comparing the flipped and lecture classes. Um, our exploratory results suggested a potential role of weekly quizzes as a driver of the effectiveness of the flipped classroom. And this is actually consistent with a couple of other meta-analyses that have similarly found that quizzes attenuate the advantage of the flipped classroom. Um, but definitely further research should explore um, in depth the role of regular class quizzes in traditional intro stats courses. Um, and however, even after accounting for our moderators, there was still substantial between study heterogeneity remaining. And there are, you know, countless ways that um, the studies could, could differ and how the flip section um, was, was implemented uniquely across these studies. So differences in class activities in the flip class, test content and formats, um, instructor expertise and experience in teaching statistics, as well as teaching the flip class. Um, this is also consistent with other meta-analyses comparing the flipped and lecture classrooms that have reported high heterogeneity. And differences between the use of active learning components are another source of heterogeneity. For instance, um, the one study in which the lecture section performed better than the flip section, um, this might be due to the regular class in the study being what, what they dubbed a super lecture, 
whereby students were given access to the same online lectures provided to the flipped classroom students. And they also, when they were in class, they used content-based clicker questions and in-class quizzes and other in-class activities. Um, and so there's some evidence that going beyond strictly the you know, chalk and talk format um, and including active components in the traditional kind of lecture class, it may minimize some of the differences between lecture classes and flipped classes. So looking ahead, lots can be done to build on the results of this meta-analysis and improve the quality of studies comparing flipped and lecture classes in intro stats. With the quasi-experimental design, students select their preferred course section. So it's possible that um, students were stronger on average in the flipped sections, but most studies did not look at GPA. So it's recommended to measure GPA and other confounders in future research at the start of the study. Um, ideally, there should be random assignment to class sections, but this is um, next to impossible to accomplish in educational research. Um, experimenter bias is also plausible based on authors working as both the principal investigators and the instructors for both sections in, in pretty much all the, all the studies. And this can be problematic if the instructor has a preference for teaching one format and ultimately decides to teach one section better. Um, so, so new studies may benefit from keeping instructors and researchers distinct. Um, future studies should also explicitly describe the test format and how exam graders were blinded to the class sections since this was only described in two of the studies and could potentially mean there was maybe upgrading for flip sections if there were sections with um, short answer and subjective types of uh, responses. So in conclusion, although our results are, are very encouraging for those um, hoping or, or planning to flip their intro stats course, uh, future studies should explore the role of active learning and quizzes in the lecture class um, before the flipped pedagogy is widely adopted as the most optimal or best approach to teaching introductory uh, stats classes. Thank you.